In this tutorial, we will discuss the color cluster tool of MyPAR, introduced back in version 1.1.2. This demo is being run in 1.2.0. The color cluster allows for original images that are color images to have their color space inspected by the color cluster tool and have the tool automatically divide up the image into a set number of colors. So let's begin in the image processor where we will start with a simple ex uh, two class example. Here we have some disease spots on a leaf. Now as you've likely come to be accustomed to, a recipe is a sequence of black and white or grayscale steps. The black and white steps represent selection steps that are selecting portions of the image. The grayscale uh, images are manipulations of the raw intensity. With color images, they're automatically converted automatically into a grayscale, and you always still have control over their channel operations, keeping red, green, blue layers, channels, or combinations of the two. And you can call those at any point in the recipe from the memory option to bring forward different color channels. So the color cluster is really more of a memory option than a segmentation. It is a segmentation, but it's always drawing from the original image uh, so that it draws from the color content. But we can still do plenty of powerful things with that. So from segmentation, we can go into color cluster. And here we can choose how many classes we like to split the image up into. If I type in two, we will do exactly that. It will look at the color space in the image and divide it up into two classes and then assign each pixel to which class it should belong. The flattened background can be used in the case of gradients in the color image where you need to correct those before dividing. In this case, I believe that no background correction is really necessary, so we'll keep that at zero. And now, even though this image appears black and white, it's really a grayscale image where the first class has been given values of zero, and the, uh, well, being given values of, of one, and the second class values of two, and then that's been normalized on a zero to 255 spectrum. So uh, class one is represented as zeros, and class two is 255. And if we go into now a threshold tool on that color cluster, it's hard to see, but there's a line there and a line here indicating uh, the pixels that occupy each of those classes. So we can simply just pick any value in here. With below selected, we've now selected class number one. So the output of a color cluster step is grayscale, and we can then run a threshold on it to keep any or multiple classes that have been selected. We could just invert now to select the background, or we could set that as a memory step and call it here, and then choose above our threshold value to select the other class. So that's it. Uh, it is incredibly useful for color segmentation. Again, it draws from the original image if the original image is color. If it isn't, the tool is inactive. So even if we were down here and we did a color cluster, we'd still be pulling from the original color image. So it is incredibly useful for uh, automated and objective color segmentation. What I can also demonstrate now is a multicolor case where we have an example of some strawberries that have their red bodies, green stems, and yellow seeds. And let's say, for example, that we wanted to just detect the strawberry bodies so that we could perform a count of them. We can start in the color cluster tool where we might choose three classes. And this is likely an example of where you would need a background flattening, just because there seems to be a bit of a brightness gradient from bottom to top. 
So we can move this slider up a little bit and now we start to detect the bodies, seeds, and stems objectively without any set threshold value. This is done simply by clustering the original image color space after it's been uh, background corrected a bit. Now the output, as we saw before, is a grayscale image where we can go in with a threshold tool to select one or multiple classes. And we're going to want to use a range threshold to grab this center class, class number two in this case. And now if we go back here and we look in the binary view, we see that we may want to dilate our strawberries just a bit. And then perform some feature rejection. We can get rid of white features that are above a few hundred pixels. Maybe let's go a little bit more to make sure we get rid of all of the holes. Then let's perform a feature separation, perhaps with a weakness of two. Let's try three to see if we can prevent some of the undesired separations. Six looks reasonable. And lastly, we might reject small features. I'd say anything less than this we don't want to count as a berry. And we may, we may want to ignore edge features altogether at the end. That's typically up to the researcher. If we wanted to, we could remove edge features here or keep them in place. And now we can see if we switch our overlay color, we've put a marker on just about every strawberry except for the ones on the very edge. 30 berries counted without the, the edge features. 18. We may want we we could get a bit more clever and uh, not exclude any edge features at all. Um, just uh, ex exclude the ones that are under 2,000, but ignore edge features, and that will keep the edge ones intact. But you see, we we do have another small one that comes back, or a couple of them that were on the edge. So after we perform that filter, we then can go down to a much less aggressive size and consider all features. So we have an aggressive rejection step that ignores the edges, one that is less aggressive but includes the edge features. And we now count 36 total berries uh, without having to sacrifice any of the edge objects. There are a couple of issues I do see. We have misidentified this stem as its own berry, separate from this one. Uh, I'm confident that with a bit more time we could prevent those errors. But the main point of this demo was to illustrate the color cluster tool and how it can be used to objectively separate out color space from uh, the original image without any threshold values. And this is certainly very applicable to a lot of bio examples where you have nuclei and cell bodies that stain differently, sometimes three or four different colors in the image, and the color cluster can be very useful to automatically and objectively 
partition that image into as many classes as you're after, with then subsequent steps being used to sort cells by size, shape, and other attributes. So that's it for the color cluster demo. We've had two examples, a two class and a three class, where we've really only been interested in one. I hope you've found the tutorial useful and that you make use of this in your research and work. Please do feel free to give us any feedback on this feature or others, any improvements you'd like to see. And as always, our custom recipe service is at your disposal as our custom training sessions. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.